So let's go ahead and go to list the chart. And I'm going to, I want to sign in. <clears throat> so you sign up, you can basically use my uh, Gmail account. Um, you can link directly to your Gmail account and just verify and you go in there, okay? So once in here, I'm going to um, uh, create a new peer, a new chart. So new uh, Lucid chart, you can start with the blank one. Okay, blank document. Uh, just say, yeah, just create a document anyway. If you ask me that, we just want a blank one. <clears throat> Okay, so what are we gonna what, what are we gonna do? Um, let's say that we're going to design a um, you know I'll put it here. So we're gonna design a logical data design for a person or owner who buys cars from any auto dealership. Okay, so so for this one here, what are we looking for? <clears throat> okay, so this is the logical design we'll get. So we have to kind of like look at that and say, okay. What kind of tables do we need in this scenario? <clears throat> All right. So if you think in the details, we're looking at a person, or you can call this the owner, <clears throat> and we'll look at uh, cars, <clears throat> okay, information about cars, and the info about a dealership, right? So we can say that a person can buy cars, meaning you can have many cars, okay? from any auto dealership. You don't have to buy only from a single dealership. You can buy from different auto dealership. And the cars, a car, if you think about a car, it doesn't matter what type it is, if it's a vehicle, can be, uh, you know, uh, stored or, you know, owned by the dealership, right, for sale, <clears throat> okay? And then the car has, information about the car, like the number and so forth. So we do all those stuff. So that means that a car can be um, bought from a dealership and the dealership can have, you know, a single car, which is not ideal or has many cars, right? So you have some kind of relationship between the two, the three uh, things here, right? But one car can only be at one dealership at any time the unique car, if you think about the actual car itself. And then when the car is sold to the owner, right, this car can only be owned by one owner. Well, we'll make some, you know, requirements that way. But the owner can buy many cars from any dealership, okay? So look at that sentence or that story. These are the conceptual design you have to come in mind, right? Put on the table, talk, talk it out, Talk with your team, or, or if you're a client and you know asking about it, ask lots of questions. What do they need? What are the requirements before you do the design? Okay, so I'm gonna uh, move that back over here as so we have room, and then we're gonna go into this blank here. So when we do, do this, I'm not going to use the standard shape. So over here, we're not use flow chart. So again, flow chart for the previous any assignment you want to use. I'm gonna go and uh, locate. You can turn all these off. Actually, we don't need these standard shapes here. You want to go and search in the library here. Search for the um, one that says ERD or entity relationship. Okay, so this is the only one. Check that box and just um, go ahead and click selected shapes. Okay, the entity relationship, that one, that's what you want. Okay, and now you see here. So, very simple, just four of them. If you hover over this, this is not, we want something that looks like this. The second one is the one you want. So it is basically, I think, drag it over here. Okay, drag it over here. And now you can, you, I'll, make, I'll make it a little, I'll make it a little bigger so you can see, but uh, let's see. Okay. So what do we need to put here? So the first table I want to look at is the, um, maybe the owner table, right? So for now, we're not going to do any relationship yet. Just put the information about those people or entity. So this one here is going to be the owner. So I can call it the owner, the name of that table or entity. <clears throat> okay. And then the key fields. And what do we want to put in this owner? So you're building everything pretty much from top down, right? Because we have to go and identify what 
information that we need to describe this owner, right? So every person like, and every table must have a unique key. So over here, <clears throat> you can put here uh, PK for primary key. You just tab it over and type, we'll create one, what should we call it? I don't know, we call it um, uh, SSN, doesn't matter. I'll just make one up, let's call it owner underscore ID, okay? So this will be the primary key for that particular um, owner. And then the rest could be uh, just blank and leave that out, that out, okay? So the next field will be things like, you know, first name, right? You need to know the first name, and then just tab, tab, and then last name, okay? And so forth. You can add more addresses and things like that too. So um, if you want to add another another row um, before or after, you can you can select one of these rows and do a right click on it, and it says answer below or above. So for example, if I do below, then here I just leave that blank, have it over, and we can call this like um, address, right? Like something like that. Okay. <clears throat> so this identifies this owner. I mean. We're just very simple. Look at that bit smaller. Oops. Uh, okay, so we have the owner table. And you can drag it over here again, or you just select this table and press the control D and it will duplicate that table for you. Okay, like that. <clears throat> so the next one could be the, the dealership. So let's put here the dealership uh, or, um, yeah. And each dealership has its own ID. So again, I use the same convention, dealer ID. Okay, that is the primary key that identifies this dealership because, you know, the one, I can have like 200 dealerships, right, in the same city. So which one is it? Oh, so you see that they have their own ID. If you go to Walmart, each store has their own store ID. That's how you identify those right <clears throat> uh, places. So again, the field would be like the name of the dealership and maybe uh, the location. You can be more specific, like the city and things like that, the address. So for now, we're just gonna put this very basic information about that, okay? So that's two, two or three IDs. <clears throat> we can add more as we go because again, during the building phase, right? If you, if you have more, more information, we can adding two until we find it. So we need another table for um, the car, right? And so I'm gonna go back here and duplicate this table and we'll just put it somewhere here, doesn't matter, put it right here. And so we'll call this one here the car. So again, notice I, I use singular noun for these tables, and even though we have owners and dealerships and cars. Okay, so just fall back to singular noun and think about each table represents one object. So if it's a single car, a single dealership, single owner, right? Rule. And then the car, I can call it car ID because again, cars are very common. So you can use the VIN number, okay? V-I-N is usually capitalized because it's very common for cars. And then the information about the car, you can have like the make, uh, model, and then we have the year of the car was built and, and so forth. You have color, the engines and um, you know, engine size and, and whatnot, fuel type and things like that, wheels, right? So very, again, very basic about the information. <clears throat> okay, so, so now that is pretty much all we need for those three things, if you want to build this relationship. So we identify the entities, we identify the unique ID that will be at, that will be used to identify each individual object or instance of that type, <clears throat> right? So, so you know, uh, Jacob could be in here, he owns a car from Honda, Percy Honda, right? He bought another car from, I don't know, Kenosha Ford or something, right? So it's all the same, same pattern. <clears throat> so now let's look at relationships. Okay, so you draw relationships by, um, if you hover, if you click on it and you hover right here at the dot, you have all these dots here, you can draw a line across. It doesn't have to be, that's mapped directly to the column. 
sometimes it's easier to view C that way, but it doesn't have to be that way. So I could just say um, this owner, I could draw a line, has some kind of relationship. Uh, well, you know, I don't really have, can I do this? It doesn't make sense, right? Can a dealership has an owner? No, you don't, right? Dealerships don't own owners. The owners don't have dealerships. Not in this case, not in a business sense. In a business sense, yeah, you, you see, but I have owner as a person. So in this case, there's no direct relationship between the two. Okay. So it would not make sense to have it this way. Right. But so so we're gonna say, okay, that's not possible. It doesn't work. Can owner have a car? Yeah, they do. They they do. So let's put down here. So we can have it's just it's just nicer to put it this way. So we'll say, okay, owner can have a car. So I can map that together. If you click the dot and connect any dot on the right side, it doesn't matter. And this is the default uh, on line here. Okay, the line here is connector connecting two uh, together. <clears throat> and the default here, it says one, the, the line here means one, it crawls foot on this side and many. So if you read again from the owner side to the car, we'll say owner can have or can own so those words you can use to add in here, one or many cars, you can also own zero cars. Is it possible? Is it possible that I may not own any car? Yeah, in, in real, real life, right? I can live without a car. So, and, and, and so to be more exact, you can click on this line. And then on the end side over here, if you look on the top diagram, <clears throat> this one here shows you the endpoint. On this side, this is on the left side of this table here, okay? So based on the line you select, it will give you that option. So I'm gonna say on the right side, the owner can have zero, it's optional or many cars. So you can drop that, click that drop down, and you select the one that has a circle in front of it. The circle with the three line, <clears throat> three cross. So now you see that it has a circle. I mean, it's optional or I can have many cars, okay? So if, if I choose the other one, like this one here, um, optional one, for example, this one here, if you do that, that means I can have zero car, or at most, I can only one car. I cannot own them more than two cars, more than one car. That is that is the restriction. So again, based on your business logic, can you allow an owner to own two cars, right? So if that is true, then you change it, okay? So that's how that's how you use this to design this probe. So we're gonna have zero or more cars. <clears throat> so from the car side, can a car be owned by one person, right? Can a car be owned by nobody? And is, is that possible, right? In the real world, maybe, if a, if a car is like, um, you, you trash it or something, then the car is still there, has no ownership and things like that. Well, assume that a car is like drivable, okay? <clears throat> so in this case, a car must be owned by somebody, right? Either a, a the owner here or owned by the dealership. <clears throat> so a car can only be owned by, we'll, we'll make a rule that must be owned by exactly one, one person, one owner. So this one here is like one owner <clears throat> and it must, it's, there's no circle, so it's not optional. Okay, so they're related somehow. <clears throat> and then right in the line here, you have to go and if you click on this little dot, if you double click on it, I think yeah, it lets you to put some text in here. So you write some text. So from the owner side, the owner has, or owns, doesn't matter, has a car, okay? So you can read it, owner has a car. But if you read the other side, say car has a owner. That's that's true too, right? In this case, it, it works both ways. If it doesn't make sense, you change the wording um, to, to say, and, and so it'll work in both ways. So like a car, like, owned by and then you put the other side and if so sometimes you you see that you see something like this as well like uh oops has has oh, fat finger has a and then you put like a slash and then 
owned by like that. You can do that. So it's understood. You can drag your foot outside a little bit above it and make some lines here. And when you read it, it's understood. Like our owner is owned by a car. Of course, it doesn't make sense that way. You can say the car is owned by one owner. A owner has um, has a car or has many cars. Yes. So you, you you identify that relationship there. <clears throat> Okay, so now we look at the other relationship. So we know that a dealership has no direct relationship with the owner, but dealership can also have cars, right? Okay, so a dealership <clears throat> has to have a car. But be before we go that, do that bit further though, <clears throat> so when you have this kind of relationship here, um, we have to specify this table or this table, a what's called a foreign key. Okay, so now they are connected together. Now, with these two table here, which table um, should be a what's called a child table or a, um, a parent table? <clears throat> so if this car, okay, if this car is owned by an owner, how do we know? How do we know that this car belongs to like Jeffrey or belongs to me or belongs to uh, Jacob? So how do we know from this information here? So when you join two tables in here, you must have a foreign key in here. So we can say that this car is owned by an owner. So therefore in this table, um, you have to have a field. So I'm gonna add another field here. You write above this make the uh, um, column or row. Right click on that and gonna add above it. And I'll put here a foreign key. Okay, so like FK, and it's gonna map to the owner ID. Okay, so that's how they're related. <clears throat> so the car has a VIN number is owned by the owner based on this owner ID. <clears throat> so the FK is the primary key is that is pulled or linked to the primary key of the other table. It's a, it's, called, it's, it's a foreign key. Okay, so now I can identify the two. How do I know which car belongs to this person? You check, you say, select da 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 from owner, join, right? join the car on the owner ID, right? So that's how they match. If they match ID to ID, then oh yeah, okay, I can pull all the cars from this table that belongs to J Jacob, or belongs to Jeff, or belongs to Christian, okay? That's how it works. And you see that, uh, you did that in the exercise um, already. Okay, you usually map to, you map to a, a foreign key and a primary key of the, of the two tables. It would not make sense if I put own ID match to the VIN number. Okay, you're not gonna find that. It's probably even to a zero. So we got that out of the way. So the next thing is now we think about the car and the dealership. Now don't focus on the owner. Now we don't care about the owner. We just focus on the car and the dealership. So who owns who, right? So a car for sure doesn't own a dealership. So it would be kind of similar to the owner, okay? So a dealership also, put here, a dry line again, owns a car. So now we go in here and can a dealer have zero cars? It's possible, right? <laughs> no dealer, yeah. no, no cars? So Okay, can have can have more than one car. Yeah, right. So you can modify this. You can say, okay, well, the dealer can have zero or many cars, but again, a car can either owned by an owner or owned by a dealer, right? So look at that, just one to one. I mean, the table to table. Don't worry about the other tables, because once you sold the car, then you know it owns <clears throat> the other way. So by the same token, how do I know that this car 
belongs to the you know Racine Honda. So the car in this table, likewise, must have another foreign key that links to the dealership table. Okay, so over here, then I'm going to add another field right below this uh, F key here. I'm going to add another one below it, and we're going to put here another F key for the dealer ID. Okay, so based on this information, I can find out. Okay, this car was owned by the dealership, but when it sold the car, it belongs to the owner now. So this owner bought this car because I mapped the ID. Where is this car bought from? From this dealership here. Okay, so you can see that relationship. If this owner sold a car to another owner, right? The owner, the owner will change to a different owner, but the original car was actually bought from this dealership. So you can trace back to where it was originally bought or purchased from. Okay, so we, we got that taken care of. <clears throat> so now we look at this, this side of the, um, of the table again. So if you think about a car, okay? So a, a dealership can have one, zero, or many cars of different types. Like have a, you know, a Honda, a, a Tesla, or a Ford, right? Now, if you think about a car or cars in general. So the way I have here is that I'm saying that all the cars, can only be owned by one dealership. Is it true, right? So in this case, it's not true because cars can be anywhere, can have, can be in, in many dealerships, okay? So in this case, it's not correct because this is very, this is very strict. It just means that, <clears throat> All the cars can only be sold at this single dealership, and that is not true. The, the one means single. You cannot have more than one dealership, so that's not true. But yeah, all the cars can only be owned by a single owner. That's true. <clears throat> the car, I guess. So, so we want to also change this one line saying that the car on the left side can be uh, sold at many dealers, right? <clears throat> okay, so, so this one here, I'm gonna go in here, add another notation here, <clears throat> just so we can see right here. Um, you can add another note here right below, um, let me see. So we so we know. Yeah, I'm, I'll just put it here by next to the the buy. I put here is a um, a one to um, many. Okay, <clears throat> because many is on the other side, right? The cross foot on the other side. So a, a person, one owner have many cars, then a car can only own by one owner. So one colon M meaning one to many. So one to many relationship. And then this one here, gonna put another message saying a dealership can, um, I guess, uh, same thing has, or put here also, um, um, same thing when we get owned by. And then we have here many, too many. I mean, not owned by, but I guess, I don't know how, how you would phrase this. It. It's not really owned, which is sold at or something. But this is what's called a many to many relationship, okay? So a, a dealership, we have many types of cars. A car can be sold in many dealerships. <clears throat> and I restrict to only one dealership. That's what this means.
or maybe they're owned by you can say uh sold at makes more sense a car can be sold at you know a dealership many dealership so this in many many in this example it, it will work fine but when you write it into a uh, code uh it will not make sense okay so when you create a table you're not going to create exactly like this and you create a, a many-to-many -many relationship. It won't work in, in the code. So every time when you have, or well, anytime we have a many-to-many -many relationship, you always, okay, always have to have a junction table between the two. Okay. Why? Because you know, something we don't put here is, for example, if I go down here, yeah, this won't change, right? The make model here won't change. But what if I put here, for example, um, let's add another, we'll be below it. We'll call it, well, we'll keep that there. And we'll call it the, the price of the car, right? If I if I price this car, and let's say this for Mustang at 50K at Racine dealership, at 50K. And if I have the same car, the same year make a model sold at Kenosha dealership, do they sell the car the same price at 50K or do they sell more or less? Okay, so if you if you don't have a junction table, then junction table, it's not possible to have a, a, a variation in prices. So you lock in the price that you cannot change. And that is not true for a car, right? <clears throat> So a car could be priced differently at different dealership because of the many, many relationship. Similarly, if you work for a company like, or you know, you work for a company and, or you contract out, uh, you are a, a developer and you do the same task, right? You, you write program to company A, you write another program to company B, the same application do you charge the same price or do you charge differently, right? So the price changes because based on the company or that negotiation, right? So your pay rate changes based on the project, even though your role is really a developer, okay? So that means that, oh, your price is not gonna be fixed across the board. So that's what this means. <clears throat> so in this case, we're going to create a junction table between the two, okay? So. And the junction table will look something like this. Let me uh, move out a little bit. So I'm gonna create another, another one. I'm just gonna duplicate. Um, yeah, duplicate this is fine. Duplicate that, put it over here. And I'll make this a little bit farther up this side to have spaces, okay? So this table here, <clears throat> so, the, so the junction table is used to connect two tables that have a many-to-many -many relationship. <clears throat> And when you do that, okay, so this, this actually changes. So instead of going to directly from the dealership to the car, you would connect that to the, um, the dealership here. You, you we call this different here. You call the dealership, I call it dealer, maybe underscore car, okay? It's commonly named that way to indicate that this junction table is a connector or a junction table connecting the dealership and the car table. So you put the name dealer underscore car. <clears throat> and then the IDs, the PKs in this case would be both of the tables PKs. So in here, you can create, <clears throat> here I put, I put the dealer ID and also the PK for the uh, VIN number. Okay, so you can see I have two PKs. And 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 those are uniquely identified the dealership and the VIN number. So they join together. <clears throat> so in here, instead of price over here, the difference is just the price. So in this case, the price will not be listed over here. Okay. So we we, so we delete the price and uh, we leave that out. So the price of the car is dependent on 
the dealership. Oops. So I delete this row because, it, and then now the lines will be drawn. I'm going to move this line. I do this line first and connect that to. I'm going to drag this out and connect it to the uh, dealer over here, so we can see. Okay, a little bit further over here. So the, the number here will be different. When you have a many-to-many -many relationship, it's usually like you would do like this, okay? So the, the left side of the dealership has a one. And then on this side, many, right? Zero or many. And then from this side, you do kind of exactly the same thing. <clears throat> so I draw another line here now from this table to this table up here. So the line will be from this table, this side is one to uh, a main. So you see that it's one on the table side, one on this side now, and many, and many goes to the junction table. So notation will be the same up here. I didn't put it, but you can put the same. Um, okay, so I, I could I could do this has many cars and then this will here um so that the same thing like that so if i do this way and we get um a line probably easier to see so there is my <clears throat> A table you can uh, design that you, you use. Okay, so you so this table here uses four uh, two of these keys. Now it's also very common because this is also the PK, but the dealership is also the dealer ID is actually the dealership foreign key. So here you would write it just like this. Also FK. Okay, and I'll make this a little bit bigger so we have more space. I do it this way like that, stretch a little bit farther out. There's some room in here. Um, I'm gonna stretch that a little bit like this. Okay. Right, so it's also the foreign key as well, but it's also part of the um, primary key. So put here like that. <clears throat> Both of them join together to form a primary key for this table. And they're also the foreign key to the dealership, the foreign key to the car. This is one method, okay? <clears throat> you can do that. Another approach I will put over here, just so you can see it, is by using like this. So instead of saying, you know, this will be like the foreign key. And I can go back to the original size like that. And I add another row above it. And this will be the PK. And this will be like dealer car ID. You can do that too if you if you if you want. Although, you know. So this is another um, option, how to create this junction table. Yeah, I put two here as you can see, but uh, this is actually the preferred approach. And <clears throat> the reason why is because uh, if, if primary key, so every table must have a PK, one or more PKs, okay? So here I'm using this PK, this PK, so it's basically joining both of them together to form a primary key. 
And there are also the foreign keys to two foreign tables because they will always be unique if you combine them together, right? So a dealership cannot have the same car twice, okay? So this is the preferred approach and database design, but you can certainly create your own uh, additional primary key like this if you don't want to use them together. The way you do here is you create, you add another ID. So follow the rule. Every table has a unique ID, so I just create one. And, and by doing this way, you actually, uh, it's not efficient because you are creating a unique ID for this table where you can actually already obtain a unique ID by combining the two. So you are creating extra, extra data, which is not um, useful. So you're just wasting uh, space here, okay? <clears throat> Put your um, optional. When he had not recommended, okay. This is, um, I mean, it's 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 okay, but this is not not. I should say not rec. I should say not efficient. Probably better. But this is not an efficient approach. This is the better approach. Okay. So that is our. Um, design. So every class is a good number, and you will see that sometimes you can even break this down further, but we'll do this in, you know, um, we do um, normalization. You can break this the number down, and you can actually break it even further um, so that, you know, the um, So the event number can be on its own table. Okay. And then I just do one more real quick and I'll, I'll, I'll just stop. So for example, what do the owner and the um, dealership have in common? I call it location here, but maybe we'll, we'll change this to address, right? Okay, so usually the address would be kind of the same, like the you know city, state, right? The address, city, state, and zip code, right? So if I if I were to list that here, it's redundant. I could do like city, state, zip code, and so forth. Same thing, city, state, zip code, and so forth, right? So what you can do is that you can add another table over here, and we'll I'm just going to create one over here on the left side. That can be shared by both the owner and the dealership. So I will create over here an address table. Okay. And then you can call it like the address ID. And then here you will put um, the address, address one, address two, and they have the city, right? And let me add another row below, city, state, and uh, zip. So here we, have, we have here, blank here, state, and then zip. So that's a very common address that can be connected to the owner as well as the dealership. And so instead of having it this way, I would then here, um, <clears throat> So the address here then will have, how do you know this address belongs to the owner and this belongs to the dealership? Okay, so you add in here, I will go here and add two keys, I put one above, one below here, add another one below here. So this will be the FK for the owner ID. This address is FK for the dealer, Okay, so kind of like the the um, the car here. Car, you know, this car, this address, this car belongs to the owner. This address belongs to the dealer. So same thing. This address here belongs to the owner and also belongs to the dealer. So they share the same table. So you don't have to have like duplicates data inside the owner table 
and the dealer table, right? You, you're creating um, a more efficient uh, uh, data. So here then, this table can now be joined by the owner table over here. And then it can also be joined by the dealer table down here. And it's a one-to-one, -one, right? A dealership has exactly one address. So the, the notation for both of those will be exactly one-to-one. -one. And then same thing here, one-to-one. -one. Okay, so one address can only be assigned to one particular owner. But, you know, in the real world, it's possible that the owner can live in many places, right? So if you look at the individual instance of that, then you have um, just a one-to-one. -one. So you can put here again, um, lives at, right? Whatever it is, the same thing, located at, and then something like that. So one-to-one, -one, it will be a one-to-one. -one. I think, um, no, it may, it may not be right. It's, uh, no, it's it's a many to one, sorry. Because if you think about a, a dealership can have different addresses, so that's not right. If it's one, it's locked in, like right? it's not possible. So this is wrong. So on the left side, the address should be, should be um, many, okay. So the address, is assigned to a dealership, but a dealer can have different addresses. Right? They don't belong to the same address. So same thing on this side here. Um, should be, I think it should be. Okay. I mean, they can have different addresses. So they're locked in. So like you, uh, like Jeffrey and Jacob and me, we don't live in the same address. So here would be one, two, uh, so we may need to one. So something like this, I think. And, you know, as you think, of, think through some more and add more data to it later, you see that, oh, it doesn't make sense. You can keep modifying early on. Okay, we add some data, some sample test data, just to make sure it works, makes sense before you go ahead and roll out and then, you know, go live or something. So not all tables are related directly, but I can access this information based on their identity and they based on the IDs, right? So I can I can actually get like find tell me all the people who bought all the, any car from the dealer from this dealer. <clears throat> I don't have a direct connection, but I can go this way and then I can connect that dealership. Right, see that how they're related because of these lines here. And sometimes you will see that um, there is no relationship between the two. Like for example, you might have a floating, a floating, um, a floating table out here like this. Maybe this is just some some kind of a, um, I don't know, a market. Right, has has no. Related relation to um, the name and then the type of market market you have. Like this table here has nothing to do with any of these cars or or dealers, right? How's the market doing? Um, you know the the whatever it is. You have the information here for whatever other reasons, like for um, decision making or something like that. So in this case is floating around. So you have like a, if you look at this in a big one. See what we call we call sometimes for two islands. You have like one big island here, and then we have one small island over here. You might have a couple islands that are only connected by two tables or more. And if you look at the adventure works again, if you see that picture, you if you expand that adventure works table, you will see a bunch of islands, a group of of related we call it themes, right? We talked about themes before. 